Well hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I've been away in Wales for a few days to celebrate a rather special birthday. But I couldn't resist taking some ham radio gear with me, no matter how special the birthday was. But I ended up using the worst HF antenna I think I've ever used. It was a lesson on not really being that well prepared. I should have thought thought it through a bit more but you know when you're operating at a um, remote location in other words a location you're not familiar with uh, you either get uh, prepared by taking everything or you prepare yourself with what you think you would need well I chose the latter I decided to prepare and take what I thought I would need I was sadly wrong and ended up using the worst HF antenna I think I've ever used. But actually, it demonstrated something. It demonstrated that even if you've got the worst HF antenna, you can actually persuade it to work. It takes a little bit of uh, working out, but let me let me get, let me just demonstrate or show you what I what I ended up having to use in order to make a few and radio HF contacts. It was a challenge, but I learned something. Perhaps you will as well. As you can see, the complex is fully enclosed. And what made it more difficult was that a lot of the windows didn't open. The windows that were high up didn't open. Only the low windows opened. You may have noticed the patch of green grass in the centre. Could have put a vertical there, but that wouldn't work because couldn't have radials when people were walking about. So that was out of the question. And in retrospect, I should have taken some sort of mast because I could have erected a mast and then run the wire from one of the windows to the mast. But I hadn't taken a mast. All I'd taken was an end-fed wire, and my plan was actually to take an end-fed wire out of the window and then across to some support. Unfortunately, there were no supports. The only supports that were possible would be um, near the roof or the drain pipe, and I didn't have a ladder, etc., so I couldn't get up there. So I was then stuck with the option of an end-fed wire out of a fairly low window down to the ground. <laughs> Not a really good option. And in fact, uh, I'll just show you here. Um, there's, the, there's the wire coming out of the window. That window is no more than about 12 foot above the ground. And the only option I could find was to run the end fed half wave, which is a 20 meter half wave, because I thought um, uh, that probably a 40 meter end fed half wave might be too long, when I was right. I could get a 20 meter end fed half wave in, but from this window, um, I then had to take it down to a sort of a plant at one end of the uh, building. And that plant was around about five foot above the ground. So I had an end-fed half wave that was 12 foot at one end and five foot at the other end, sagged a bit in the middle, and I then <laughs> sort of well screened by the um, building uh, st structure itself. Well, would it really work? <laughs> well, it was a challenge. Now the first thing I found was I had a high VSWR and that was really because the antenna uh, was um, had gone low resonance because it was near the ground and for various reasons I couldn't I couldn't uh, adjust it. So I was saddled with a, well let me show you, something like a 5 to 1 VSWR. <laughs> Terrible. But I was using the uh, Zigu 6100, X6100 and uh, that has a built-in antenna tuner. Now, I uh, installed the equipment um, on the floor of the room. That meant to say I could run a very short bit of coax um, from the uh, Zigu transceiver to the uh, 49 to 1 Anun, and uh, I actually had the 49 to 1 Anun just inside the window, ran the wire through the window out down to the far support point. But this, four, this 5 to 1 VSWR would have been a bit of a challenge, except that the Zigu matched it okay. 
the Zega was quite happy feeding into a 5 to 1 with the antenna tuner switched in. Now, you might think, well, but with a 5 to 1 VSWR, as you can see on, on the meter I just showed you. Um, but the point is that with a very short length of coax, that high VSWR or high VSWR is of no significance. There's no loss on that short length of coax cable. Provided the transceiver can deliver full power into the antenna, it should work. And in fact, I was pleasantly surprised this terrible antenna actually did radiate. And I'll just show you a picture here of the reverse beacon. Now, there was no DX there, it was mainly European stuff, but it was working okay. And I had quite a few European contacts. Quite, I was quite pleased, really. But it did demonstrate to me that even with a high VSWR and a terrible antenna, you can still work the DX. And I'm sure if I'd have been on 10 meters, I didn't have a 10 meter antenna, um, because that particular antenna, and I won't go into details, that particular antenna um, only worked on uh, 20 meters as an NFED half wave. Um, so I didn't have the option of going on 10 meters. I listened and there was, there was quite a bit of DX there, but I didn't have the option of working it because the antenna wouldn't work. So I was stuck on 20 meters. But it worked, <laughs> it didn't work too badly considering uh, the terrible sighting of the antenna and the terrible SDR, VSWR, you think, well, can it work? Yes, it did work. Now, it wasn't all amateur radio by any means. We had some great fun at, the, uh, at this venue here yeah, and um, uh, the family in, enjoyed themselves. But I did venture into the room occasionally and had a few contacts on the Zigu 6100. I was running it on an external supply. I was running 12, 12 volts into it, so I was running 10 watts. But even so, I was very pleased with the results. So the lesson, well, the lesson is that if you're in a particularly difficult location, even at home, it's worth trying because even the worst antenna in the world, and this probably ranked fairly closely to the worst antenna in the world, works. It can work and it gives you contacts. You're not going to compete with the guys with the three element Yagi sort of 10 or 20 meters in the air, but you wouldn't expect to. The point is that even with a poor location, you can make contacts. And that was a pretty poor location. <laughs> and I did make contacts, so there we are. Uh, a lesson to be learned. Thanks for watching this, this video. Thanks for your support. I'm glad to be back. Mind you, uh, I'm off again, would you believe, in a week's time to Scotland, to the Highlands of Scotland, um, on a sort of a business trip. Um, but I will be back after that. So I'm not quite sure whether I shall operate in the Highlands of Scotland because it's a rather hectic schedule I've got, but uh, we shall see. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you for your support on this channel. You take care, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.